Welcome back everyone to more of our gameplay series of X4 Foundations. We're here in Argon Prime. Uh, actually, we're in the office of the representative of Argon Prime. We have just received a promotion. So let's actually start out today's video by taking a quick glance at where things are with our faction relations. And in short, things are going extremely well. You see at the top, Antigone Republic at a 12 Argon Federation, plus 11. So we just recently got to a plus 10 with them. And then the Cigars Pioneers, 17. Terran Protectorate, 15. So our plan to use mining to have good inroads with uh, both the Terran Protectorate and the Cigars Pioneers has worked beautifully. And then Talati, we're at a plus 14. Remember, our next goal after a plus 10 is a plus 20. Now we do have a few more factions that I want to get to at least plus 10 and eventually plus 20 as well. And that is the HOP and the Paranid. And the reason for that is I want to pick up a few blueprints from them uh, in the long term for ships and maybe a few items uh, such as their engines and, and that kind of thing. Uh, so I do want to continue working with these guys as well. But Talati's going great. Both of the Terran factions are going great. And then, of course, Antigone Republic and the Argon Federation also going extremely well. So now let's back out a little bit and let's take a look at where we are with our property own. So I have been working very hard at expanding our fleet. We now have more traders than we had before. We have a lot more miners. I've added more silicone miners, more ore miners, hydrogen, you name it. I've been adding them in until we are really mining everything. I've also attempted to open up uh, and start mining the what we'll call the default map uh, instead of restricting all of our mining attempts down here to more of the Terran area. Uh, I've tried to expand out into some of the other areas as well. And then eventually we're going to add some uh, miners of our own for our stations. But things have been going extremely well. The one downside that I have really seen is that our NVIDIA mining has all but disappeared. Uh, you can see we do not have any NVIDIA mining fleets up here. We only have one remaining NVIDIA miner. And that's because the AI for the miners is just anything but intelligent uh, in, in a few different ways. So what's been happening? And I have purposefully not... Uh, done anything about this just so that I could show you guys sort of how this flows if you're new to X4. So essentially what's been happening is one of the favorite areas, let me see if I can find it. I have to remember where it's at now. But essentially, oh, here we go. Uh, down here in Pius Miss 11, the favorite destination for our Novidium miners is to go down here into this area and beyond in order to uh, mine. However, all three of them that have been killed so far have been killed in this area. And look why. Now you might say, oh, well, they got caught in a bad area. Well, you would think there would be some sort of communication <laughs> that would say, hey, maybe we don't go to this area. Or maybe we start looking elsewhere in this sector that's closer to some of these stations, which could potentially provide an outlet. Should we get attacked, we could simply run to one of these stations and at least dock for the time being, if nothing else. But nope, they don't listen at all. So they have continuously gone back to this area. In fact, you can see, let's see, where is this guy? Oh yeah, he's gone way out here. You can see, I mean, he is way outside the uh, normal area right now, but no worries, these things will expand into deep space, basically, basically as far as you want them to, unless they happen to be nearby another sector. Uh, but yeah, so they just don't listen. And there are a few things that I might be able to do to, to take care of that, but essentially there's not a lot I can do for a long-term plan other than babysitting them manually, which I have no interest in doing. So, that's how the NVIDIA mining is going. It wasn't a huge operation to begin with, but it's a nice perk to have, and it is some nice income along the way to have as well. But it is almost gone, and I matter, imagine it's a matter of time uh, until this guy 
is going to run into uh, some issues and he'll be destroyed as well. But by far and away, the biggest thing I want to show you guys in today's video and our focus today is back over here in Silent Witness. We have a new station. All right, so I've been doing some work on the HQ. If you uh, remember, if we go into the research here, the HQ needed storage. And for right now, it needed uh, container storage because we need advanced electronics and energy cells for our basic teleportation research. And this research, I believe, will allow us to teleport within the same sector to some different ships, but not outside of that. And then as our range continues, we will be able to ultimately teleport to any ship anywhere on the map. But for right now, this is how we're getting started. And I managed to get the storage built there. I actually put some solid storage as well as container storage because a little bit later on, I believe we're going to need some Navidium uh, for some of this research if memory serves. So I went ahead and put some of that on there as well. So we should be in good shape. We now have uh, at our HQ, we have a budget of a million credits that I have placed there. And our manager should use that budget to uh, go ahead and acquire these resources. If not, there is another way that they will be acquired and we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, I wanna show you guys our energy cell factory. In fact, you see we have an upkeep mission to acquire a manager. So we'll take care of that here uh, momentarily. So this is our energy cell factory. This is the very first factory that I wanted to put down. Now it's not quite operational yet. The fact that we have the upkeep mission simply means that we have somewhere to dock. And so if we scroll in a little bit, you can see we have our dock here. And then all of this is storage. This is all container storage. So to give you an idea of what this is going to be ultimately, Let's go ahead and plan our build. So I'll show you guys, this is the game plan right now. And all the stuff that looks solid, that's the stuff that's already been built. And then this is what's going to be worked on next. These are the energy cells. These are the solar panels that will produce the energy cells. Now, the question comes up, why did I start with this one? Is it because it's the most profitable? No, it's because it's the basis for all of our needs. All of the stations that you're going to have with any sort of production are going to need energy cells. So if we sort of get a top-down view here, you can see we have a huge area to build in. So what I have done is I've started at the bottom end with this particular plan, and I have worked side to side, and then I work my way uh, through the next axis until we have eventually used all of the area. So for right now, the plan calls for 15 of these energy cell production modules. But we, as you can see, have plenty of room to get up probably somewhere near 30 by the time it's all said and done. And if we run out of room and we still need more, well, obviously we could build another station or we could simply come in and expand these boundaries. Now, because there is no owner of this particular sector, at least until we get to where we are the owner. Uh, we're a little ways away from that at this point. It doesn't cost us anything, so it's no issue whatsoever. But this is the basis of all of our production. That's why I started with this one. Now, in the meantime, until we get our other stations up and running, it will simply be a way to make some additional income. But this is a long-term plan, and it is the very beginning of our long-term plan. Now, before when we were roaming around out here in space, you might have noticed that there are some, let's see if I can find them now or if they're gonna be off radar. Yep, they're off radar right now. But there are some enemy vessels. In fact, you might remember in one of the previous videos, I can't remember if it was the last one or the one before that, uh, we actually got approached by one of those vessels saying, hey, essentially we want your cargo, so go ahead and dump it, we're taking that from you. And now we didn't do that, but that, is some of the pirate activity that is here in the area. The SEC, or the, excuse me, the SCA uh, faction is, they have a lot of that. And of course, I knew that going into it. That's just part of being in one of these uh, sectors that doesn't necessarily have a lot of protection for you built in. 
But you can see there's definitely some activity here, but some of the biggest activity is going to be us as we are going to eventually continue expanding until we can drown all of this other activity out and then we'll decide what we want to do with the SCA. Do we want to attack them? Do we just want to leave them alone? Because eventually we're going to have enough military presence in this sector that they will no longer be an issue. But for right now, I needed some protection uh, in the sector, so I went ahead and got a few fighters. So if you take a look at the list here, we have a total of four fighters right now, and we have a couple of Corvettes. And we'll take a look at uh, their makeup and, and the look of those here in just a second, but I wanted to show you how I've got them for now. This will change in the future, but for now, I've simply got two fighters and one Corvette working to protect each one of these areas. In fact, there's one of the uh, pillagers right now. For now, we're just going to leave them alone because they're not really uh, bothering anything for the most part. Uh, but if they do decide to bother something, we've got at least a little bit of a presence here to hopefully deter them and take care of anything they might do. So slowly over time, I will continue to add a bigger uh, presence of fighters as well as medium and larger ships. But for right now, I think this will be okay. So now let's take a look at exactly what these fighters are and where they came from. So we're gonna, for that, we're gonna head back over to Argon Prime and we're gonna go under buy ships, small ships, and the fighter design is the Eclipse. All right, now, not necessarily saying it's the best fighter, but best bang for the buck for us right now was this one. So I went ahead and did, I believe this is the Bolt uh, one that I'm using. You see a few of these that are grayed out um, and that is because they use some modules that are only available from other factions. So we'll be able to build those a little bit later on once we have some additional blueprints and we're building our own ships. But for right now, this is what it looks like. It has a total of four weapons on the front. Right now with this loadout, they're all uh, the bolt weapons. So if we move down a little bit, it's the bolt repeater Mark II on all of these. The total price is a little over one and a half million credits. So that's why I haven't gotten a bunch of them because they are fairly expensive being so early in the game as we are. So that's what it looks like. Uh, the hull is pretty good at 4,000. You can certainly find some uh, bigger, stronger fighters, but this one I feel like is pretty good here early on for us. All right, so as we back out, in order to take a look at the Corvette, we need to come back over to our Terran space. And down here actually to Brennan's Triumph, where we're gonna head into the Pioneer. And so this is a medium ship and it is a katana. Again, not making any claims that this is the best in the game or anything like that. It's just one that I really like. So let's pick out the Corvette loadout. And you can see one of the reasons why I absolutely love this thing is because the speed is amazing. 534 meters per second. And then of course the travel speed, not bad either. And that is from a combat uh, engine. Then if we come down to the weapons, uh, it has the Proton Barrage. And right now, unfortunately, I can only get the Mark I. I really want a Mark II uh, version of this weapon. I'm not sure how effective it is, but essentially this is a bolt weapon for uh, the Terran. That's what this is. Uh, it operates a little bit differently, but that's essentially what you've got. You've got a machine gun on the front of this thing. But I don't have all of them as machine guns. I do have some pulse lasers on here as well. So two of each that are lined up as the weapons. The hull is pretty good at 11,000. Uh, certainly not good as good as a, a frigate. But uh, the shield is pretty good as well. But the speed, I think, is really the biggest bonus here. Uh, it will allow us to travel very quickly and get the job done. Or at least that's the hope. So that's, those are the ships that we have to this point. And also right now, I am still purchasing all of our miners and traders over here in Antigone Memorial. And the reason I'm doing that is because I feel like they give us the best bang for our buck right now. Uh, there are some other vessels that certainly do a great job, but I feel like this is simply where I want to be for now. Now we can also order 
uh, some ships over here in Mars from the Terran Wharf, from the Terran faction. Uh, but at this point, they are very good ships, but they are so expensive. Uh, and I'm looking at expanding our fleet, and cost savings is just where I need it to be right now to continue using uh, Antigone Memorial. So that gives you an idea of where we are right now as far as our current fleet. You can see it is steadily expanding. I would love very much to combine some of these fleets uh, together, but so far it has not worked out. Uh, too well. I've got some issues that I'm trying to deal with in the fleet management side of things. Uh, in fact, one of the fleets that I made just simply didn't work at all. I mean, I, and I did it the same way that I've done all of the fleets before, but there's some bugs to work out. And I right now, not sure what's causing it, but we'll work through that. But if you do happen to see in the future that we start filling up the unassigned ship portion, that will be why. Uh, because I would certainly prefer to use fleets. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in today's video, uh, actually two more things. Real quick, I want to address the story mission. We'll be getting back to that probably in our next video, but now that we have some additional ships here in the sector, we're going to be able to complete the next story mission, which has us doing some long-range scanning, but we needed some additional ships for these three nav beacons, and now we certainly have that option. So we'll get back to that probably next time. Uh, but for now, the final thing in today's video is about our supply ships. So I mentioned this briefly before when we were talking about trading. Uh, this is a different mod. You have different mules. It's uh, part of mules and warehouses. And the supply mules are absolutely one of my favorite things in the game. So let's talk about what they do. So I'm going to bring up one of these right quick and we're going to go over to the behavior tab and we're just going to take a look at what they do so you can see right now he's already got in his order queue he's going to dock he's going to execute a trade looks like he's buying turret components and if i yep before i even see his path he's headed over here to the energy cell factory because each of our stations will be outfitted with shields and turrets so that's where he's headed He's headed right over here to the build storage at the energy cell factory to make sure we have all of the components should anybody decide that they want to attack one of our factories. And then if we click on uh, the default behaviors uh, here, you can see we're using the supply mule. So there's a few different options with the different mules that's part of the mod. Okay, we have uh, a travel mule, a station mule, a distribution mule, and a supply mule. All right, and we won't go into huge detail on each one of these, but uh, the station mule is wonderful if you assign it to one of your stations. It will try to sell any of the wares that might be produced by that station or try to gather any of the wares that you need. So it is an excellent mule, but the supply mule is my favorite because as we are constantly working on either building or expanding our stations, the, su the supply mules... We assign them a home station, or uh, a sector in this case. And so I simply assign them to Silent Witness 11. And when I do that, they will now look and see what any of our stations in this sector need and go and get it. So if we're building a station, they'll look and see what the build storage needs, and they will go get it. If we have a station that's up and running, and maybe they need some additional supplies, uh, for the work staff, or maybe we need some additional components for something, they'll go get it. Right now, we only have three of them. Uh, long term, we'll have at least 10 once we get busy and have a lot more stations because I plan on, depending on how much time we have, because remember, all of this is leading up to the Tides of Avarice DLC. Whenever that gets released and we're able to start doing uh, work with it, then we'll just simply go with it uh, wherever we happen to be at that time. But until then, I'm going to work continuing to expand the number of stations we have in the area. But again, I don't think the SCA is going to be a huge problem going forward. Uh, but if they are, as always, we'll try to deal with it at the appropriate time. And don't forget, we also have 
another silent witness area over here and we can also expand into silent witness one as we need and get even closer uh, to the main road network within uh, the galaxy here or the entire map but that is what's going on right now so what's my plan going forward well I'm going to continue expanding our fleet but I'm also going to start building some additional stations right now is where I'm going to start putting together the framework of our own production so we have the energy cells that's job one then we're going to get into some other things such as refined metals which is going to lead us into whole parts and whole parts are what's always needed to build ships every station we go to is out of whole parts or extremely low for whole parts we've seen it every time that we have tried to expand our fleet it would generally tell us something like oh by the way you can get these but it's going to take a while because we're low on whole parts so we're going to try to take care of that problem once we get to building our own uh, ships because we're going to be making our own whole parts and we'll expand um, our production as needed so that is the long range plan but right now we're still very much in the early stages so that's going to do it for today guys and i hope you guys are enjoying this as much as i am this is what gets me excited about x4 foundations